FeatureCam 2019 now supports the use of fixed angle tool holders, which allows programming of angled features without the use of coordinate transformation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my machine to use a fixed angle tool holder. As you can see, I've loaded in my machine. In this case, we have an upper gang and a lower turret. And we're going to apply the fixed angle tool holder to the lower turret. So as you can see, it's made up of two solids, a base which is fixed to the turret, and a second solid which rotates around the first. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set up the parent-child relationship between the two solids. So I'm going to head over to the parent-child relationships dialog. I'm going to go ahead and select my parent solid, which is the base, the one that's fixed to the turret, and next the child, which is this upper solid, and apply. By setting a parent-child relationship, it keeps the two solids together during simulation. When one moves, the other moves with it. The next thing to do is to set a local coordinate system. This coordinate system specifies how this upper solid will rotate around the lower. And in this case, you can see by the red user coordinate system, it's going to rotate around the Y axis. Now that this has been set, I can head over to my movement dialog and specify how my solid will move and rotate. And as you can see, we specify that it's going to rotate around the B axis around that y-axis of the user coordinate system we just specified. By heading over to the specified limits, I can specify a minimum and a maximum angle that this solid can rotate. As you can see, I haven't set any angles because this particular tool holder can achieve any angle around 360 degrees. So now that we specified the movement and the anchor point of that movement, the last thing to do is to set this system as a tool block. So I'm going to go ahead and select this base solid and head over to tool block for tool posts. In this dialog, we need to specify the user coordinate system of which the tool block attaches and fixes to the turret. This is shown on screen using the red user coordinate system. Now that this has been set, I'm going to go over to tool locations and set the location where the tool will be mounted to this particular tool block. In this case, at this user coordinate system here. So you can see I've already specified one slot. I'm just going to go ahead and edit it. And first you need to select the user coordinate system where the tool will be mounted, like so. Next, choose the spindles you want to cut, followed by the types of tools that this particular tool block can hold. In this case, we have Rotary Z and Rotary X tools. The reason why we choose both is because, remember, this tool block can rotate. So we can either go down the Z axis, or if we rotate the tool block by 90 degrees, we can have rotary X tools. Lastly, and to make this a fixed angle tool holder, we need to set the angular position to set manually. This means that it will only be able to achieve a single angle. If I was to set this to programmable, the tool block would be free to index to any to multiple different angles. And that's the final step in specifying our machine design file. Now that the file's ready, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my FM file. And as you can see, I've loaded in my part, and I have a variety of different features already pre-created. The only feature left to create is the machining of the selected face. So to do this, I'm going to do nothing different than creating a regular terminal feature. I'm going to choose face with feature recognition. And I'm going to choose around an index axis, and I'm actually going to use a face to specify that index axis. Selecting next allows me to specify the face in which I want to machine. Finally, specifying a thickness value, and at this stage I can press finish. Now that I've programmed my facing feature, I need to head over to the tool posts tab, which is located in the results window, to make sure I'm using the correct tool post to machine my newly created feature. In this case, I don't want to use the gang, I want to use the turret, so I'm just going to use the click and drag functionality to position it on the correct tool post and in the correct operation order. Finally, I'm just going to add a synchronization point to make sure that I'm machining the various operations exactly how I want to machine them. At this stage, I'm happy with this result, so I'm going to go ahead and close the results tab and proceed to the next stage, which is making sure that I'm using the correct tool posts for this particular feature. So I'm just going to head over to Features and Manufacturing and into the tool mapping. And as you can see, the tool that I'm using to machine phase 2 has been automatically mapped to a tool slot on the turret. The final thing for me to specify is the tool block that I want to use. In this case, we're going to use the, the fixed angle tool holder block that we just created. 
The last thing to do is to head over to the post processor. Just going to press edit. Navigate into CNC info and the general section. And as you can see, we have two new tick boxes available to us. The first, use fixed B axis holders, ensures that your programming is error checked. This means that if you try to program at two different angles using the same tool slot and tool block, it's going to give you an error. Because remember, our holders are fixed to only be able to machine one angle. The next new tick box is the use setup coordinates of B axis on the outer diameter. This allows us to specify whether we use the setup coordinates. This allows us to specify whether we use the setup coordinates in the NC code or whether we perform a transformation such as the G68.5 which needs to be specified in your post. So at this point I'm just going to press OK, close down my post, OK to specify the post that I want to use, head over to the home tab to specify that we want to use a full machine simulation, single step to get a good view. Before I press play, you can see that the angle tool holder has automatically been positioned at the fixed angle required to machine the feature. Pressing play, we'll see that we'll perform our turning operations, the thread and the groove, followed by our angled feature and then the remaining features required to fully program this component. 